Joining me is Jim McCaukin, CEO of Principal Global Investors. Good, good to be with you, Rhonda. So nice to see you again at the Milken Institute. Let's talk first about where your investors are in terms of their comfort level with the stock market. Did NASDAQ 5000 scare or embolden investors? I don't think it's really done either, actually, because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a market landmark, but uh, the last time it was, at this, it was at this level on the NASDAQ was 15 years ago, so memories fade. I think what our investors are looking at is the overall rating on the market in terms of yields and PEs, and that isn't in an extraordinary state. You know, the, um, the S&P 500 uh, PE ratio is about 17 or 18. Against a 10-year bond yield under 2%, that ain't bad. Actually, I would argue that uh, most of them, most of our investors are pretty confident based on the rating that U.S. equities remain pretty decent value. It's been interesting looking at the first quarter. There was a lot of negativity around the slowing of the U.S. economy in the first quarter. Putting that aside for a moment, companies did better than expected in a slower economy. And I think that's enough in a low yield environment for uh, the US equities in particular and domestic earnings, small caps and mid caps to perform quite well. Are investors now finally fully invested in the way they should be? Not really. I think there's still a lot of cash on the sidelines. Uh, but you know, investors, even when you talk about that, it's a different group to what it used to be. The world has a lot more private wealth. So uh, it's private rather than through defined benefit plans, which are shrinking. Uh, defined contribution has grown. Much more of it's under individual control. And then much more of it's global. You know, we have seen something like two thirds of our new business in the last quarter came from non-US sources, which for a very US domiciled manager is actually quite surprising. But there is a lot of money looking for investment returns and yields in Europe, in Asia particularly. And uh, I would say that those investors are actually scrambling to get more into the market because of their requirements for returns. Where are we in the cycle of some of that international money coming into the US? Do you think we're in the early innings of that or later? I think we're in the fairly early innings. It really, it really got going when the dollar started strengthening last year. And uh, you know, I would argue in baseball terms, we're probably in the third or fourth innings of the foreign investor coming into the US. And you just have to look at the yield patterns in their own markets. You know, when the German 10-year ten ten yield is 10 basis points, U.S. Treasuries look like a steal. <laughs> and uh, similarly, the Japanese have been very used to very low yields. That actually puts pressure on valuation as well as on yields. And uh, the Japanese investors for us have in the last uh, 12 months or so been particularly interested in our U.S. yieldy strategies. So I'd argue it's fairly early still, just given the pattern of uh, yields uh, in the international markets. I want to switch gears a minute, Jim, because you are speaking on two very interesting panels at Milken. Both have to do with women and gender issues. We know the investment management industry is notoriously male-dominated. Yep. Why is it important to bring women, more women, into that industry and the conversation and what does a female fund manager do differently than a male? I don't think it's so much what women do different to men, which it's all too easy to get into stereotyping if you say that. In my view, there are two main reasons for why diversity is a strategic imperative. One is, in an era of skill shortages, it would be frankly stupid if business didn't make the most of half the population. I think that's one very overwhelming point. Secondly, I do believe that diverse organizations are and actually can be proven to be more effective than very monocultural ones. And when I say diverse, I'm thinking most obviously of gender, but also of race, languages and culture. I think that the discussion you get the decision making you get and the leadership you get in such organizations is demonstrably superior to the old fashioned monocultural organizations. So we're passionate about this. Well, in investment management too, you're now managing money from a more diverse population as wealth fortunately has spread out among yeah. different uh, genders, asset classes, ethnicities. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, uh, we monitor these things, you know, for young professionals at entry, we're something in the 50, 55% female sort of range, reflecting 
college graduates reflecting how the educational system has worked out. We were a decade ago quite concerned that those women were leaking out of the system as they got to higher levels and more scope within the organisation. There's still some of that, but to just throw out to you two numbers, um, in the operating committee that I work with, which runs Principal Global Investors, we're now 38% female. In our board of directors as a public company, we're 36% female. Those are not where we ultimately will be, I believe, but those show great progress from where we were before. And I would argue we're a better organization for it. We'll end it there. Jim McCock, good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rhonda.